Welcome to the Dreamit Dose. I'm Adam Dakin, Managing Director of Dreamit Health Tech. In my first dose on interoperability, we focused on five common mistakes that send startups into the EHR wood chipper. Many startups think of data integrations as a checkbox on their to-do list versus the creation of a thoughtful interoperability strategy and plan. So in this dose, we'll review a framework and process for developing such a strategy. Let's get started. Dreamit Ventures has been investing in great early stage startups for over a decade. The Dreamit Dose allows us to share best practices to help even more founders. Tell us about your great startup using the links below. The definition of a startup is a race against insolvency. Early stage companies must de-risk critical assumptions before running out of capital. Demonstrating initial market acceptance, sometimes referred to as product market fit, is usually at the top of the list. For institutional investors, proof points that customers will use and pay for the product and platform are table stakes. So, instead of focusing on the how-tos of integration, let's develop an interoperability strategy that is at first all about closing early customers. We can describe the process as four evolutionary phases. Phase one, the foundation phase. During phase one, your team is working with partners to build and refine the foundation of the platform. Users are expected to provide unvarnished feedback on their likes and dislikes. You need strong relationships with users who share your vision and believe in the product's potential. They need to tolerate a clunky UI or even an awkward workflow. Minimal integration, maybe none at all, is fine if the platform is usable for the purpose of gaining feedback and insight into the customer's problems and needs. Now, let's assume you're ready to move into the early commercialization phase, what we'll call phase two. Phase two, gaining credibility and proving value. This phase is all about engaging customers in a substantive commercialization discussion. The key during these initial discussions is to convince the first customers that the juice is worth the squeeze. The financial impact of the pandemic has forced most healthcare systems to only consider new platforms with compelling and near-term ROIs. Every startup makes ROI claims, many of which are unsubstantiated, so buyers are understandably skeptical. The goal here is to establish credibility and get to the next step, which is typically a trial to purchase. Notice, I don't use the word pilots. We prefer to use the term trial to purchase. Why? because it's a more accurate description that clearly articulates the expectation of a future commercial relationship. As a quick aside, we've heard CFOs say that anything less than a five times ROI on a new platform or product is a non-starter. As we start our trials to purchase, we must anticipate what level of integration is required. Moving on. Phase three, minimal viable integration. This is all about convincing customers that your platform delivers real-world value and ROI. Typically, this involves some form of a trial to purchase. We might refer to this as the minimal viable experience, or MVE, needed to move to a commercial deal. Note, an MVE should not be confused with an MVP, or at least not the traditional definition of a minimal viable product. MVPs just don't make sense in most healthcare settings. Why? In platforms targeting overworked providers or health systems under financial pressure, the experience better be damn good, not just viable. When your customers are working 12-hour shifts and responsible for people's lives, there's little interest in anything that impedes workflow or has a steep learning curve. Software bugs, clunky UIs, data that's not fully validated simply will not be tolerated. So build an MVE that makes customers motivated to do battle when the trial purchase is over. On the other hand, the minimally viable integration or MVI needed to create an MVE can be just one or two data feeds. You can fake it till you make it. Manually performing tasks behind the scenes with band-aids and duct tape that will be automated later on. Just do not expect customers to subsidize these costs. Investors understand that your cost structure and margins will improve with automation and scale. This is often the survival phase because without early customers and product market fit, access to capital may be difficult at best, impossible at worst. Now, let's assume the first paying customers are on board, several trials to purchase have converted, and it's time to step on the gas. That's when you move on to phase four. 
phase four, commercial scaling. With some initial paying customers bought in, your platform now has commercial proof points. Based on the feedback from these customers, we now understand the deeper integrations needed to harness the full power of our platform. While this is exciting, the complexity increases dramatically. We may need real-time two-way data integrations from multiple data sources while having to meet more rigorous security protocols. SOC 2, high trust, HIPAA certifications can cost well over 100K. Many sources of data require managing a variety of data formats and APIs. Build versus buy requires careful analysis. The right approach should be driven by the needs of your target customers. The technical implementations require deep domain expertise to figure out. The right mix may include internal resources, consultants, and third-party integrators. Conversations with third-party integrators may be a good place to start. Most will not charge to do these. All right, here's a quick recap. Stop thinking about integration as an action item. Use the four phases that I laid out in this video. Start thinking about integration as a phased interoperability strategy and plan that evolves with scale and aligns with your go-to-market. Most importantly, understand the minimal viable integrations needed to create an MVE and land early customers. And finally, as you acquire customers and demonstrate the ability to scale, raise the capital needed to move beyond your MVE so you can build more comprehensive and secure integrations. Quick shout out of thanks to several folks who provided invaluable input on this dose. Mark Engelin, RX Live, Suba Aaron Java MD, Caroline, Nico Skivaski, Redox, and David Heller, Esquire. That's your dream at Dose. Now you're ready to develop a thoughtful interoperability strategy and plan. Please leave your questions in the comments section. And if you found this video helpful, like this video and subscribe to the channel. To see all of our doses, go to dreamit.com forward slash dose. And if you're the founder of a great health tech startup, visit dreamit.com forward slash apply. And it's too fast. Typically, that involves some sort of a, some sort. We might refer to this as an MVE. Now I skipped the line. The right approach should be driven the right approach. Start thinking about integration. I got an itch here. Boys.